Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create this cool, noisy gradient a sort of texture. And it's not going to be very complicated. I think this should be relatively beginner friendly. Even though I'm not explaining every single detail, it's not a complicated setup. But even if you are not a beginner, there should be some interesting things that we are going to unpack today. You might notice there is some sort of like 3D effect here. So it's not just plain gradient. That kind of thing we achieve with the distortion filter. It's going to be interesting, I think, this part. And honestly, I planned this tutorial six months ago and I tried to record it a couple of times. It didn't go well with all the noise outside of my apartment. So here we are, six months later, going through this tutorial. And uh, yeah, let's just uh, dive right in and I'll show you also a few things. So we are going to use this butterfly shape instead of the head silhouette. And you can also use text as a mask. And we can also create this sort of texture with the distortion filter. Those are just a few tests. So same again, like this is gradient plus distortion filter, just a few other explorations. And yeah, let's start creating. So we'll go with the ellipse shape. That will be the base of our gradient, believe it or not. That's quite simple. So we'll just connect the width and height and set this to 50 for a moment and add this into a duplicator and organize things as usual. So I'll use the distribution type set to Fibonacci, but feel free to explore different distributions. It doesn't have to be Fibonacci. Uh, the count is 270 and the radius 1130. And we'll create an array from our palette, or you can just create a color array and fill it in with colors and connect it to the ellipse shape fill. So here we have the base of our gradient and we want to animate a few parameters. So this is a very simple setup for the gradient. You can make it uh, way more complex and uh, you can create different uh, sort of duplicator animations inside it. I'm just showing you the basic one, the one that I used here. So uh, what we want to do is add noise on the radius and set it from 50 to 85, the frequency to 0 0.5, stagger to 1000. And we're also going to add the noise into the shape position of the duplicator. So there's going to be some sort of movement inside our gradient. We'll go from minus 150 to 150, frequency to 0 0.5 and stagger to 0, 0, 003. And if you, so right now, this is what's happening. If you increase this frequency, it will have like a sort of more like flickering effect. And we also want to change the blend mode to either plus or screen, depending on the, well, first of all, on the background color that you have here. In this case, I will use plus, but uh, try different ones. And now we have... Oh, gradient. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, now we need to add blur. Since the last time I tried to record this tutorial, Cavalry added like a billion different blur effects. You know, we are just going for the fast blur because honestly, like in this case, it's quite enough. But there are some really cool uh, blur uh, filters. So anyway, so we connect the X and Y and we can go somewhere between like 25, 40. I'll go to maybe 27 the blur and now it's kind of like boring right like just this sort of dots moving around so to add this gradient a bit more of this like 3d effect we are going to use the distortion filter i don't know if i can call this 3d but you know you get the idea so if we add the distortion filter this is what we get it doesn't look great uh, that's because we have a noise shader. There are a bunch of shaders that you can use. In this case, we're going for like a very simple basic one, a gradient shader. I will uh, set this to radial. Uh, let's set the scale to 90. Well, the size ratio, I use 0.95, but honestly, I think even one could work. 
we'll turn off the preview and go into our settings. So here you can play with the amplitude, depending on how much you want to distort your gradient. And you can also play with the distortion of sets. So we'll go with the six uh, in this case. Now the distortion filter is pretty interesting. I only just uncovered a few of its possibilities, but honestly, like going with all these different shaders, you can achieve super crazy results. I really recommend digging into this. And uh, you can also experiment with the direction mode. It doesn't have to be so right now we have the lens. You can do like some kind of warpy effect and animate those parameters and create this like a tunnel sort of mm, thing. Let's just go back to like 50 and lens and we'll set the uh, position for the black at 0.4. Now we have like the base of our gradient. This is what it looks like right now. And what we want to do is to add our mask and we're going to use this butterfly SVG for it. And yeah, so the good thing about the SVG, it works with the free version of Cavalry. If you are in the free version, so you, Basically, just drop it into your composition, you scale it the way you want it, and you add it as a mask to a duplicator. So that's one way to do it. And uh, the way I created this SVG, by the way, is simply with ChatGPT, same as with the head silhouette. I just asked ChatGPT to generate it, and I asked it to make uh, an SVG. And for some reason, I don't know, ChatGPT doesn't always get the SVG correctly. So you can use the third party website to generate SVG from your PNG image, the one that ChatGPT generated. And if you have a PNG, if, if you are in the pro version of uh, Cavalry, you can use Isolines shape. So basically you just create an Isolines shape and then you connect your image into the input shape and it creates this sort of silhouette that we can use as a mask. So it's uh, the same as SVG, but uh, it only works in the pro version. And as you can see also here, I did this like kind of interesting sort of like flicker appears inside the butterfly. And then we have this explosion. It's all like same thing. We just added the animation in the radius of our duplicator. It's uh, pretty simple. Uh, the cool thing about the eyes lens is we can actually use the Swiss videos, something that I think Anton did in his explorations here. As far as I remember, this was Ice Lines. So I haven't actually tried this, but I think this could be pretty cool. So you drop the video in Cavalry, you create this sort of silhouette, and then you apply the gradient inside. You might need to animate like the position and the distribution to match your like animated silhouette, but you know, that's just ideas for exploration for the future. And uh, let's come back to our tutorial. And here, what we see right now, it's just a little too large. So I'm going to change the size of the duplicator. And here you can play with the amplitude, uh, depending on how much of this like warp, well, sorry, not warp, lens um, effect you want to achieve. Or like imagine you can actually do warp and yeah, like, Move. You can animate the offset and that will be your gradient. That's pretty cool also. Anyways, <laughs> sorry, a lot of distractions today. So what I want to do here is turn on the butterfly and we'll set it to screen blend mode and we'll add an inner shadow. And that's what I did in my animation. So we'll use white color for the inner shadow and set this to eight and then just offset uh, the position slightly so you can see this sort of like edge and the only thing we are missing here is this beautiful noisy texture what we are going to do we will create a background shape go to fill and add a noise shader and once again since i planned this tutorial a lot of things had happened. There is now also an SLA shader that can create pretty cool noisy effects. I would recommend you to try this one. There's also a green filter. I haven't tried it quite yet, but it could be useful as well. 
Uh, anyways, let's look at the settings that I used. Uh, so what we want to do, we will set the simplex noise and we want to make the scale quite a bit smaller. So we'll go to zero, zero, I'm sorry, zero is point zero one and the maximum to zero twelve minimum is the same then we'll change the frequency to zero zero three time scale up to four uh, we'll change the lacunarity and again up to two sorry actually i did forget one zero here we want to make it quite small so when you are happy with your gradient feel free to experiment with the gain and all those settings then you just need to turn on the overlay mode so if your background is not black like in this case let's just have a look at it and i don't know make it like make it i don't know blue uh, you will see the noise texture obviously on the background as well. So you can also use your SVG as a mask on the noise. So this way we only see noise on top of our butterfly. And also in this case, with this color on the background, I think the plus mode doesn't really work well. The screen would be better. Uh, so yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. Let's come back to our black background so that's it guys that's the main animation and now we'll go into all the crazy explorations and ideas that we can do with the distortion filter and let's just make a copy uh, so we can mess uh, around here a little bit and i'm going to let's just disconnect the mask so we can see our gradient and scale it up to one as it used to be all right, so this part of the tutorial simply to give you ideas for exploration. Uh, you might need to figure out some settings. One thing, for instance, that we can do here, instead of radial gradient, we can use linear. And if we turn it on, what we see right now is we have it scaled up over the whole composition, black here, white here. Uh, but what we want to do is actually decrease the scale to, for instance, 0 0.02. But since we have the tiling set to clamp now, we still uh, can only see like one instance. Uh, we can actually use a repeat. And if we do repeat, what we will see is that this is the, um, the effect that um, I did here. And also one other thing I added here is the frame on the offset. So I simply connected frame here to the offset X. You can play also, you can animate those parameters. You can animate the black and white points of the gradient. And you can also play with the blending modes. I can create interesting effects. Directional mode can be interesting here. You can animate all of those parameters and keyframe them to create something actually quite unique. In uh, this one, I basically just used a conical gradient. Again, this is all like uh, same setup, same like gradient, simple gradient shader, just with the conical gradient. We can also, let me go back here. We can uh, try an SLA shader, for instance. Uh, and let's turn on back our butterfly and connect it as a mask. Decrease this slightly. And let's play around with our shadow. So, yeah, increasing the size, increasing the displacement creates this sort of ripple effect <laughs> if that makes sense oh, this is interesting <laughs> yeah uh sorry don't mind my weird narration right now because i'm literally trying things on the go i think i'm not going to go uh, very deep in here so we don't get to like half an hour tutorial or something but one thing that i wanted to show you uh let me save this file and open something else uh there's this example basically what's happening here is 
Same thing, it's just two distortions set to the linear gradient. One of them is vertical, another one is horizontal. So it's like just two separate uh, effects and with the frame on the offset X, uh, just the way that I showed you before. Uh, but if we turn off the distortion here, uh, what we see is the, the gradient beneath it is different. And I simply just experimented with this, like what we can do with this file from Scenery by Mario de Mer, And it's an interesting way to set up a gradient. The only thing I added here is a gradient map on top of it to recolor our gradient. And then those two distortions. So hopefully you will have fun with this tutorial and it gives you some ideas for explorations and feel free to tag me as usual and I'll be happy to see what you can create with it. And until next time, bye. <laughs>